Right, I knew that I was going to go to school because I didn't want to work construction. I didn't want to work the fields for the rest of my life. This, it sucked, right? So I wanted to go to school instead. Um, and I was the first guy in my family to go to high school. Um, my, my dad, third grade, my mom finished elementary school. So high school was already something new to our family, right? And it was something different. But I, uh, I, I liked it. Uh, I was lucky enough that the high school I went to had a marine science program. Even though we lived in Phoenix, Phoenix is in the middle of the desert. For some reason, my high school had a marine science program where we got to learn all kinds of things and we actually got to go to the beach and stuff like that. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, right? So that was a huge incentive for me to continue education, right? And I went through the marine science program for um, three years. On the fourth year, uh, as a senior, um, our teachers gave us an option for how we wanted to have our senior year of high school in that class. They said, you know, pretty much up until this time, every time you go to a class, you read a book, and then you get a test afterwards or a quiz to see how much of that that you read, you retain. Well, this year, we're gonna do some applied sciences with you, right? Everything that we have learned in marine science, they wanted us to apply to a project. That project turned out to be a robotics competition, a made ROV competition. And I saw you guys from this school have a bunch of trophies out there, so that same competition is the one we try to do. Um, but again, we're from the desert. We had no idea what this competition entailed, right? And I came from a little town in Mexico. When I first came here, they didn't speak English. And I don't I never really thought that I had a lot of power in me. I didn't know I, I could do a lot of knowledge work, right? But this was really the first opportunity where I got the chance to apply the things I had learned to school. Um, and, you know, they gave us the option to either do the classwork or take on this robotics challenge. So we're like, all right, I don't want to read any more books, we're gonna end up doing this challenge, right? We're gonna end up building this robot, we're gonna participate in that robotics competition, right? And little did I know that participating in that robotics competition was a lot more work than the classwork, right? Because I ended up having to work through lunch, I came in after school, I would come in the weekends, whenever I wasn't working with my dad, I was, you know, all the other free time I was spending with the robot. And we got to learn a lot, I got to learn a lot. Um, the, the, the part that uh, made it a little bit harder was the fact that in West Phoenix, where I live, is a really poor area. And our budget to build this robot was $800. Like, we wanted to put all kinds of cool things on it, syntactic foam, we wanted to buy all kinds of cool electronics, you know, laser gauges and things like that to measure the things that we had to do during the competition, but we, we can do a lot of that stuff. So, with $800, we built this robot out of PVC pipe, right? Um, and. That's the, the reason we actually named this robot Stinky is because of the PVC pipe. I don't know if you guys ever have to glue PVC pipe together, but that glue that you used to glue the PVC pipe together it really stinks. My high school didn't have a dedicated area for us to work, so we were working pretty much in a janitor's closet. And that thing is tiny, and we actually have to glue the whole thing in one sitting. So we're sitting there gluing this robot, right? The whole area there stinks really bad. One of the school administrators walked by and said, Man, it really stinks in here, right? We were in high school, we thought it was funny to name the robot Stinky, right? So, that robot that you see there, that's, that's the name Stinky, right? So we ended up going to this competition, we're building this robot, and the teachers tell us, you know, there's two different divisions in this competition. One of the divisions, the Ranger division, is mostly geared to high schools, and then there's another division, at the time it was called Explorer, and that division is mostly geared towards colleges. And, you know, we're from, Phoenix from the desert, we have no idea what building an underwater robot is like, right? So we were gearing towards doing the ranger competition, but the fact was that we thought we were going to lose, right? And we didn't want to lose against other high, school, other high schools. And in our mind, wait, if we enter the explorer division and we beat one college, if we beat one college, we can say we beat a college, right? And if they all beat us, we can say, well, if it's colleges, they're supposed to beat us, right? <laughs> so we ended up going in the Explorer Division. And then the teacher's like, um, you guys know that MIT is competing in the Explorer Division. Um, I didn't know what MIT was, right? I, my dad had third grade education. I was the first guy to go to high school. College was something that was really far off for me. I didn't really know who MIT was, so it really didn't face us. We're like, oh, cool. I don't know who that guy is, so whatever. <laughs> right? so, we ended up going in that Explorer Division, right? So we came out here, we came to uh, Santa Barbara, uh, and we ended up competing there. Somehow, the $800 budget 
helped us build this robot that ended up actually winning the competition. We won the Explorer division that year. And so, okay, cool. So we won this competition, right? At high school, I uh, won this competition. So now what? Right? Well, that was the, the, the next thing, right? I never thought that I had it in me to go to college, right? I think I had set really low expectations of what I could do, right? And I never thought that I could do it. But winning a competition and then going online and finding out who my tea was made me believe a little more in myself, right? Made me feel that, hey, I have a little more to give, right? And then college, all of a sudden, seemed like something I had to do, something that was really attainable. And that's when I really started pursuing college. Um, after we won the competition, uh, articles, uh, TV things started coming out. It took a while, it took about a year. But eventually, uh, Arizona State University heard um, our story and I ended up getting a uh, full ride scholarship to go to Arizona State University. Um, and then it made it really easy, like, what? What do, um, what do I pick, right? What do I major in once I get to go to college? And it seemed that the, option, the, uh, the decision was pretty obvious, right? I picked something in STEM, right? I really like building the robot, I really like uh, you applying that knowledge, right? And engineering seems to be where you apply everything you learn like that. So I chose mechanical engineering. I focused on STEM, right? Um, then I started looking like, well, how much does a mechanical engineer make, right? Back in those days, 2004, 2005, when I was looking in there, they were making between 50 and 70 grand when I graduated college, right? I was like, that's pretty good. My dad at the time used to make like 300 bucks a week, right? So that's like $15,000 a year. And he was supporting a whole family with that much money. Then he got to thinking, wait, if I graduate with a mechanical engineering degree, I'm going to start making over 50 grand a year? That seemed pretty good, right? So that's why I went with it. So um, one thing, you know, I can't really um, tell the kids enough. I can't really emphasize this enough. I, when you go to college, if you're really unsure what you want to take, right, just pick one of the applied sciences, right, pick something in STEM. Because at the end of the day, you might not end up doing exactly what you majored in when you actually go to a job. But having a degree in STEM shows your employer that you can learn stuff and you can apply what you learn. And eventually, you, they're going to teach you what it is that you have to do. So if you're ever unsure what you want to major in, just pick something in STEM. It's not going to be the easiest college degree, but I can guarantee you, you're going to have a job, right, if you really go for it. Um, so I went to uh, community college for a year in order to get enough credits, and then I went to Arizona State University. Uh, while I was there, I founded a club called the Rubble Devils. We also build underwater robots, and we got to compete against MIT again, right? And even from Arizona State University, we were able to compete competitively with them, and you even beat them at some points, right? So the, the talent was there. We just needed to believe in ourselves quite a bit. Um, so I went to Arizona State University, 2005, 2006, and then in 2007, um, because I remember, I told you guys earlier, I came to the States through a hole in the fence, right? So I didn't have no papers. Arizona passed a document, uh, passed a law saying that if you didn't have any documents, you were gonna, you, you did not qualify for in-state tuition, and you didn't qualify for any state uh, scholarships or grants. So pretty much a full ride that I had to go to Arizona State University was taken away. And not only did they take away my scholarship, then I had to pay out-of-state tuition. Right, so the last two years of college were extremely hard, um, but all the work that my dad made me do during middle school and high school kind of helped out a little bit because the days I wasn't going to school and whenever I was in, in school I was working construction and I was applying for every single grant that I could, every single scholarship that I could. One way or another, in 2009 I graduated from Arizona State University and I got my degree in mechanical engineering. And I was one of, it was a pretty bittersweet moment. Because I had this degree now, right? I had a degree in mechanical engineering. Now I want to go and make those $60,000 a year. But I still didn't have papers. I didn't have a way to go and work for Boeing, or GM, or Ford, or any of them, Intel. I didn't work for any of those big companies because they wouldn't hire me. So it, it was a hard decision. At the time, I had been married for two years. Uh, my wife and I had a daughter. And there was a way that if I went back to my home country, to Mexico, I could apply to come back to the States uh, with a green card. So we, we decided, you know, there's a way I can potentially get a green card, let's go for it. So I went back to Mexico. I went through the whole process that set, set by law on how you get a green card if you came here undocumented. And 
When I went to the consulate, they told me, wait, um, you were in the United States too long after you turned 18, we're gonna deny your, your petition. And furthermore, we're gonna tell, you're gonna ban you from coming to the United States for 10 years, right? So I was really disappointed at the time, I didn't know what to do. And they're like, but wait, there's a, there's a way you can apply for a waiver, and maybe if you can prove that your family will face extreme hardship um, without you being here, then maybe you can come back to the States. So we went and applied for that waiver. That also got denied. So then, you know, I don't know what else to do. But at the, and then he clicked, right? At this point, I already had a mechanical engineering degree, right? So I started looking for jobs in Mexico. And the first place I went to apply for, they offered me a job, right? They had, it was a plant that makes uh, electrical components for cars. You know, all the electrical harnesses that, you know, when you push a button on your car door that moves the mirrors, or moves the mirrors, or that moves the windows up and down. They used to make all those electrical components out there. And I started working with them. They're like, I know you have a degree, but they only gave me a job in assembly line, so I'm just putting little cables in a little place, right? And I worked like that for about a month. A month in, they're like, wait, you speak English, you have a degree from an American university in mechanical engineering, um, and we have an opening running a production line, so you can be in charge with like 12 or you know, 14 people, depending on the day. And they're like, would you like to have that job? I'm like, yeah, I'll take that job, right? So pretty soon I was making the same amount of money in Mexico that my dad was making in the States, right? Just because I had a degree. A couple of weeks after that, they're like, hey, there's an opening for a production supervisor. You speak English, you came from an American university, you know, in mechanical engineering. This is industrial engineering, but I, we think you can learn this. Are you interested in that supervisory position? I'm like, yeah, I'll take it, right? So pretty soon I was supervising 100 people, you know, supervising between eight and 10 production lines on any given day, just because of the education that I had, right? And that's when something else clicked, right? Even though the, the loss had separated me from my family, pretty much taken everything away, they couldn't take my education away. And that education that I got here worked out there just as well. Pretty soon I was making enough money in Mexico that I was able to send money back to my family in the States, which is really not how things work, but that's how it worked for me, right? Just because I went to school and I stuck with it, right? I think about it, you know, sometimes, had I been given in that situation and not gone to school, what would have happened, right? My life would have been a lot worse. That degree worked everywhere, it worked out there, and I was making enough money to live comfortably. About a year after they uh, uh, denied my claim, uh, Senator Dick Durbin from Illinois um, started talking about passing the DREAM Act. He was looking for stories to tell in front of Congress to try and support his idea of the DREAM Act. Somehow he heard about my story, told my story in front of Congress. A couple of weeks later, I got a notice in the mail saying my green card had been approved, that I needed to go and pick it up in Juarez. Right? So, I got to come back to the States. Um, and one of the, those things, right, in high school, I also was part of ROTC. I, I, I like the military, I like to do all the cool stuff, that, that, you know, the ro running, repelling, going out there and camping and all that cool stuff. So I came back from Mexico um, in August of 2010, and then February 1st, 2011, I joined the Army. So I was in the Army for three and a half years. Um, I got to jump out of aircraft, and I got to go to Afghanistan, and I got to do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, afterwards, I came back to the States, um, and then I started working looking for jobs. Uh, coming out of the military, so now I'm a veteran, and I have a degree in mechanical engineering. I applied at GM, I applied at BNSF, I applied at CR Bard, a bunch of different places. Every single one of those places gave me a job offer. Just because I already was a veteran, I had a degree in mechanical engineering, and none of those job offers was doing anything in mechanical engineering. I learned the other lesson that I kept telling you earlier, right? Do something in STEM, the employers will teach you what it is that you have to do when you get there. But they want to be able to understand that you can learn whatever it is that you have to do. Um, I ended up uh, working for the BNSF Railways. Um, and um, the BNSF Railway is a train company. So pretty much, the I don't know if you see a lot of trains out here, but there's some orange trains that you might see somewhere when you travel. That's the company I work for. Uh, it's a pretty cool company to work for. Pretty much anything that you wear or you know, buy at any of the big box stores, you get it from the train at some point. So it's, it's a pretty good place. And uh, believe it or not, even though it's the railroad, I work doing a lot of, um, I work with AI, I work with data science, I work with, uh, you know, a lot of data. Still not related to mechanical engineering. 
but it's still something that the company believes I can learn, and they're teaching me, right? And I learned that, and I get paid to learn some things, which is it's pretty awesome, right? So if you again, if you're not sure what you're gonna do after high school, if you're not sure what you want to major in, major in something in STEM. There's gonna be a job for you out there if you go for it. Um, so there's some things though that I always try to point out, right? There's always something that, that, that how did I get to where I am, right? And it's not like I have this huge recipe. I don't have a, a lot of things that, that got me to where I am, right? Just I always go by those three little things that I have up there, right? Continue to prepare yourself. Imagine what my life would have been like in Mexico if I didn't have an education, right? After I went back for the green card. It would have been a lot harder, right? When the time came to go out there and go through that, I, I was prepared. I had the right education, right? And I think that's the lesson that you should all take to heart. Um, the other one is surround yourself with good people. Uh, your friends really make an impact on who you are. The people that you surround yourself with definitely affect the decisions that you make. And furthermore, the decisions like joining the military, the decision of going back to Mexico, are not easy decisions, but having the right people to support you makes making those difficult decisions a lot easier. So be, be selective about who you let you know, be your friend, who, who you let influence you. And then lastly, don't forget where you came from, right? I don't forget where I came from. I know I came from Mexico, I came to the United States through a hole in the fence, and I lived in a poor area of Phoenix. To this day, whenever I get the chance, I go to a, a high school, I go to a community college, I go to elementary school, to try and talk to kids that are like me, that have the potential, but they don't, they don't know it yet. Because every single person here has the potential to do whatever they want to do, if you stick with it. And I think the hardest part of it, the hardest challenge that you have, is, is, is not the legal or the financial thing, it's the part of believing in yourself and sticking with it, not quitting when things get hard. I think that's the difference, right? Just stick with that. And hopefully you won't forget where you came from and you use that as a drive to get you going. Um, and then I have a couple pictures here of things that I have done. Um, I've gotten, <laughs> yeah, I got the chance to go to the White House on several occasions. Uh, one of those times it was for the White House Science Fair. And I was just walking around the White House looking at all the great paintings, all the great pictures. And then I get a text message from some random number saying, meet on their JFK's picture at whatever time. I'm like, I don't know who that number is, but sounds cool, I'll do it, right? So, so I'm sitting there with a meet JFK's picture, right? Just, just minding my own business. And then the CEO from Microsoft shows up. And then some football player comes in alongside me too. And then there's a bunch of rich people around. I don't know like many of them. And then some person comes in, he's like, Follow me. So we follow that person down to like another floor of the White House. And then we're just sitting there mingling and then the doors open and then the president walks in. <laughs> Shakes every one of our hands, you know, knows our story, knows you by name. And it was like, I was, it was a pretty good experience. It was, uh, it was crazy, right? And then I got invited to go to the, uh, the State of the Union address too. And I got to meet the president again. And I got to ride in, you know, in like those, those, uh, those limousines, those, uh, bulletproof limos through the Capitol Mall with the lights on and they're blocking traffic. It was pretty cool. Uh, but I think some of that, so I'm pretty happy about that, right? Another thing that I'm really happy about is like my kids, right? My kids keep, keep me motivated to this day. So they're down here. I have, uh, I have a 10 year old and a 6 year old. And they take a lot of the other free time that I have. And, you know, my family's always been there, right? It makes it easier to make some of these decisions, you know? You know it, makes it, it makes it easier to keep going. Um, and also proud of my military service, right? That's our guys up there on the right that kept me safe while I was in the country in Afghanistan. Um, and that's me in a parachute, actually. If you look at that picture up there, the one on the far right, the guy that's kind of like, kind of off, that's me. <laughs> I, was, I was always afraid that someone was gonna, was gonna, like when you jump out of the airplanes, right? There's two doors to the airplane, one on each side of the aircraft, normally. And one guy jumps one side, one guy jumps the other side, right? So it just, and, but you jump like 120 people sometimes. The odds of you hitting another parachute are pretty high. So I was always scared of that, so I was always staying away. And that's why you see me way out there, away from everyone, because I was always afraid of that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of me. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I had a, I had a, 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 I had a, a, a weird travel path that's taking me to where I am today, right? And I think, you know, people often ask me, right, do you ever feel that you were discriminated against throughout your time? Right? You ever feel discrimination, right? And th there's times that I have felt it. 
but I never really let it affect me, right? And, and the military was really one of those places where once you wore that uniform, everybody was that same color, right? And it didn't really matter. Because when I was in Afghanistan, I got to get into a lot of firefights, right? None of the time when I was in a firefight did I feel the Taliban was shooting at me more because I was from Mexico, right? We were all the same. And that's, that's another one of those lessons the military taught me, right? The military is, is a good place if you're not sure about you know, where to go, right? It's another place that will get you going. So that's kind of where I leave you. I think I've, I've kind of...